Well, good morning and welcome to Bloomer Baptist Church once again. My name is Pastor Patrick Rhodes. For all you watching on the web, on the podcast, listening in, or tuning in on Facebook or YouTube, we thank you for joining in with us this morning as we worship God together and as we get this, this great blessing of communing with Him and communing with one another, having fellowship together. Next week, we'll be starting a new series titled Bold Face and Integrity, where we'll be looking to the life of Daniel for examples of how we should be living above reproach as Christians in a culture where it is often very perilous, dangerous to be counterculture. But today we have our final day in the book of Proverbs. So I ask you to turn in your copy of God's words to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 to 27. Proverbs 4, 18 to 27. There's pew Bibles in front of you. You have your cell phones. I do just ask, again, this isn't the time to be playing games on your phone, to surf Amazon or Facebook or the web. This isn't the time for any of that. This is the time to focus on God. So let's focus on God together this morning. If you have a copy of the Bible of God's Word, I just want you to open it yourself to Proverbs 4. We will have it on the screen for you, but I want it open yourself so that you can make notes, you can underline, you can highlight, so that you can have that memory of where books of the Bible are, where stuff is that matters. We've been in this proverb series for a couple of months now. We've been learning wisdom for living, and I've often said that there are many places we go for daily wisdom, but unfortunately, the Bible, prayer, and the brothers and sisters in Christ that we have in our lives are often the last places we go for wisdom. We often let other sources of wisdom deep into our souls, when in reality, the best wisdom comes from God, God's word, prayer, and God's people. Today's main idea Main title is this, guard your heart. Why should we guard our hearts? And what does it mean to guard our hearts? Well, let's start this morning with reading from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18 to 27. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day, but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's body. I want you to first notice King Solomon here here talking to his son, giving him this wisdom. He doesn't just say it once. He doesn't just say it one way. He says it multiple times and in multiple ways to pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. He's pressing hard, giving him a charge to listen up, son. Listen up. What I'm about to say is of utmost importance. We continue in our reading of Proverbs 4, 18 to 27 here with verse 23. Above all else, above all else, this doesn't mean just above some things, above a few things, above the little things, or above the big things. It means above all else. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows free from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead and fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the past for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot from evil. Guard your heart. Again, I say guard your heart. The main scripture for today, the main idea we're talking about is that guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, which said, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it, which brings us straight into number one. Everything affects your heart. Everything affects your heart. Again, here in chapter four, King Solomon, in all his godly wisdom, continues to charge his son to listen up and to pursue wisdom at all costs. But he starts giving some reasoning as to why. Notice there are two contrasting paths here, the path of the righteous and the path of the wicked. 
I'll read it to you again. Proverbs 4.18, the path of the righteous, that's one path, is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Verse 19, but the way of the wicked, oh, a contrasting path, is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been just stumbling, falling, tripping over things in darkness, and you just you don't know what it is? You can't seem to walk straight, but you can't see why you keep falling. That's the difference here between living a righteous life versus living a life along the path of the wicked. Everything affects your heart. What we listen to, what we watch, what we give our time to, our energy to, what we follow after, what we seek. It also then affects our speech and our actions as well. It affects our moods and our general outlook upon life too. King Solomon later uses several examples of body parts such as heart, ears, eyes, because all these things are affected based off what your heart feels, what your heart desires. What do you put into your heart? Because what you have in your heart will come out through the body. The heart is commonly thought to mean the whole being, your mind, your emotions, your will, your very soul. And John MacArthur states that the heart is the depository of all wisdom and source of whatever affects speed, sight, and actions. I think I got a a bad word there, not speed, but it's whatever affects your sight, your actions, your speech. The heart, therefore, is valuable, valuable. But we have a problem, a real problem. You see, the heart is valuable, but it goes multiple ways. And from our nature, our hearts are evil. Our hearts are broken. Our hearts are sinful. And we have hearts which need refilled, repaired, and fixed. Pastor Ray Ortland says, your heart has a hunger, a thirst that only Christ can satisfy, and he can overflowingly, forever, freely, for you fill your heart. Come, come as you are, come moment by moment, drink him in, he says. We need hearts continuously filled with the ever fresh life of Christ by faith in the gospel. Jesus said in John 7, 37 and 38, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. We will lose our way on the journey of life if we keep going to wrong sources of wisdom. But if we go to Christ, if we go to Jesus, we will never lose our way on this journey of life. We'll keep coming to Jesus and drinking in his acceptance, his forgiveness, his promises, his love. Everything else flows out from deeply here. Next, we must guard our heart because just as everything affects your heart, everything comes from your heart. Your heart is the circuit breaker for life. Think about that circuit breaker in your house, in your basement. Maybe your dad, maybe you, maybe your wife, maybe your husband. Maybe you've had to flip a breaker before. Something broke, something blew that fuse, blew that breaker, and flipped it off. You see, too many Christian hearts do not have the proper power they need because your heart gives power to all you do. And too many Christian hearts have faulty wiring because their wiring is not grounded properly on the word of God. Our power is not coming from his wisdom, his word. We're not seeking him as we should in prayer. We're not seeking the godly wisdom of godly people as placed in our lives. We're afraid of confrontation. We're afraid of hearing what is right, what is true. Because to hear this would cause us to realize that we are living in a life being deceived and must change. Our circuit breakers are breaking. They're flipping off and on and off and on as they're malfunctioning with bad grounding. We may go and flip the breaker. We may replace a breaker or fuse, but if we never get grounded properly to God and his wisdom and through prayer and through his people, the power will keep fading away. It will keep turning off. We need to have our heart cleaned, renewed, and guarded. 
Every part of your life is affected when your heart is malfunctioning. Just like that circuit breaker, the whole house is affected. The power shuts off when that circuit breaker is malfunctioning. Yourself, your family, your friends, your work, everybody around you is affected when your heart is malfunctioning, when your heart is not grounded properly to the word of God and to prayer with him and to his people. You must Stay connected to him. We must change our hearts, and then we must guard our hearts. We do so much to help and guard others. Let's spend some time getting our hearts where they should be. Let's spend some time actively seeking out how we guard ourselves. We find ourselves back to the two paths now. One path, the wicked, the bad ways of the world. This path, listening to wrongful, false wisdom, acting upon it, It's like living with the breakers blown. We're living in darkness. We're living stumbling in the dark. But the opposite path, with all breakers working, grounded, powered on with God, his word, his son's sacrifice through the cross and the life that we have through through him in the Holy Spirit, righteous living. We will find light shining bright, we're told. We will see right from wrong clearly. We will see the right way to live. It will be as if the morning sun is upon us and we're looking towards midday sunlight. We will see clearly God and we will be focused on the true hope, the peace, and the love that we have through his son, Jesus. Finally, number three this morning. Your life reveals your heart condition. Your your life reveals your heart condition. Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. My son, pay attention. My son, pay attention to what I say. Again, he urges his son, pay attention. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot far from evil. Again, notice the repeated words of a father to his son, urging him greatly to pay attention. Listen. I'm sure you can relate, parents, how often you you encourage your kids, listen up, kids. How often God speaks those words into our lives. Listen up, I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to tell you the right way to live. I'm trying to tell you how you can have hope and peace and joy in a life filled with so much evil. I'm trying to give you wisdom. I'm trying to give you my son, Jesus, to follow. But so often we don't seek him, we don't follow him. So here the father urges his son, listen up, what I'm about to say is of utmost importance. Your heart is of great value. We must feed it goodness with scripture, with Christ. We must guard our hearts. As one pastor said, it is the command center of life. This is why your heart is always under attack. Because if Satan can attack your heart, if he can bring it down, the command center is shut down and we run around with no idea what to do. Who or what are you allowing in that captain's seat, in that headquarters, in that cockpit to control your life? How do we guard our lives then? How then shall you live? Your life reveals your heart condition. The behaviors in life reveal the health of the heart. Evil speech reflects an evil heart. Gossip, lies, speech meant to hurt others equal an evil, sinful heart. This also applies to our actions. But then God glorifying and people edifying speech and actions equals a renewed and guarded heart a heart focused on Christ, a heart focused on his wisdom and on truth. Matthew 12, 34 says, the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. So what wisdom does God have for us here in Proverbs 4, 24 to 27? How should our hearts speak? 
How should our lives speak? 24, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt, corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. People, friends, church, family, we have been led astray by the wolves, by lions, by deceivers who are looking to destroy, to devour, to kill. People looking to lead us away from God. We have given Satan and his supernatural armies easy targets as we seek wisdom from the wrong places, as we devote so much time and energy to wrongful things, to things not meant to control our lives, to things not meant to fulfill us, to things not meant to fill our lives with joy and hope, but God and wisdom, Christ and the Holy Spirit, these things should be filling our days. This is where we fill, find our purpose. This is where we find true wisdom, life, hope, and joy. We often act as if we do not know Christ. We often act as if we are someone controlled by the world, by Satan, by his deception. But we must act like Christ. We must act according to his ways, according to God's words, according to true wisdom. And according to this, we must watch our mouths, watch our eyes, fix them straight ahead, focus on godly living, give careful thought to your path. We must ponder our ways because your life reveals your heart condition and because Everything affects your heart. Your heart is the circuit breaker for your life. Is your life right with God? Ponder your ways. A great general ponders the ways of his troops before the battle. We must think ahead, ponder our ways, how to navigate the future now. Are you stumbling? Are you feeling lost? Are you living in darkness? We must change our hearts. Turn to Jesus, submit to him, follow him. Ask forgiveness for sinning, forgiveness for not following after him and his ways. Ask for his help. Thank him for dying upon the cross and confess that you believe in him and will follow after him. Live according to his righteous ways. Yield to his right way of living. Ask yourself some questions. Do you have a new heart? Are you guarding your heart? What do your struggles, your speech, your actions reveal about your heart? Are you feeling like you're walking the path of the righteous? Out of the heart, we choose Christ, but out of the heart, we also choose evil. Where is your heart today? Is it bright and shining like the morning sun? Are you walking on a path with full light of Christ upon you? Or are you walking in darkness, stumbling and falling down? Guard your hearts. Guard your hearts by going to the word of God, praying and going to his people for help. Guard your hearts by digging into his scripture, his words, and following wisdom, following Christ. Guard your heart, keep it safe. Watch your life. With your heart, we must seek, find, and serve God and his people. I wrap up this proverb series with these thoughts. God gives wisdom for living, but we must guard our hearts and follow his ways. Seek God, serve God, and help people see him, find him too. Wisdom is the most important thing we can pursue, the wisdom which is Christ, Jesus. Follow after him, pursue that wisdom. Pursue God, pursue Christ and his love. And we're told in the Proverbs, if we do so, we will reap the rewards of wise living. Guard your hearts, Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have given us wisdom. 
We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that through him we may have life and life forevermore. We might have hope and peace with our heavenly father. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, a great helper in our lives. And we thank you that we have something to look forward to, life with you. Please forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for seeking our own selfish desires. Help us to seek you. Amen.